Hey, welcome back to Coyote Bushcraft. Let's get this puppy on the fire and get cooking. Five star if you ask me. I'm gonna teach you all today how to go about making one. Okay, so I got the ocarina all taped up. Hey everyone, welcome to Coyote Bushcraft. So today I want to take you all through the process of creating buckskin leather from just a raw deer hide that's just been cut off an animal. So I'm going to take you through the entire process. So I'm going to take something like this, which is just a fresh hide just taken off an animal. Um, still got a bunch of meat and fat on it. As you can see, it still has all the hair on the animal. And I want to turn that into something that is like this. And this is completed buckskin leather right here. And so this is ready to be cut up and sewn into different kinds of pouches or, or clothing, um, all kinds of different stuff. It's just a really nice, good, durable fabric and material. And so it's a lot of work, it's a lot of different steps to get from a hide like this to a leather like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the next few days and tan a couple deer hides and take you through the process with me. And so a quick over overview, the first step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flesh the hide, or hides, and so basically that just consists of scraping off all the meat and the fat and stuff that's still left on the underside of that hide. After that, I'm gonna soak the hide in a live solution. I'll talk more about that later, but I'm gonna soak it in that, and that's gonna allow me to then scrape the hair off the animal, um, or off the hide, rather. And then I will actually go through the process of tanning the hide, and I'm gonna be doing something called egg tanning, which is similar to brain tanning, but I don't have brains, so I'm gonna be using eggs. And then from there, I'll actually smoke the hides to preserve it. And I'll talk more about each step when I'm actually doing it. That's just a quick overview. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm just going to take this hide. I'm going to throw it on my fleshing beam, and I'm going to start fleshing it and getting all that meat off. Okay, so here's my uh, fleshing beam. And basically, it just consists of a log that's pretty smooth. And then I have a couple sticks just kind of propping it up, supporting it, so it's all secure. And this is going to just be a good place for me to throw my hide on. Basically, just toss the hide on there. And then you're going to take a tool like this, and this is a fleshing tool. And um, it's basically just kind of a dull blade with a slight edge on it and a couple handles, and it just is, uh, allows for easily scraping the hide. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm trying to get off all these fatty, meaty bits on this hide. And so I'm just by just scraping down in one direction like this, you can slowly kind of start removing some of that material from the hide. Okay, so I got my hides here, and they're both fully scraped now. Got all of the meat, all the fat off them, got it down to that good skin layer, that kind of whitish blue layer. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take these hides, and I'm actually gonna soak them in a lye solution. So a lye solution is an extremely alkaline solution. Um, so this one in particular I did using uh, hardwood ash. And so I took uh, hardwood ash from oak, about a gallon baggie worth, completely stuffed, and put it in this bucket and mixed it with about four gallons of water, and then let it sit for multiple days. And now, when I dip my finger in it, it feels very slippery, 
kind of stings the little cuts around your fingernails and that's how you know you have a really good alkaline lye solution. And what that's going to do to the hides, it's going to puff up the hides and it's going to puff up the area around the hair follicles of the hides as it swells and it's going to make it to where it's very easy for you to scrape off all that hair just like we scraped off the meat. And then it's also going to puff up the dermis, which is a, a membrane layer between the hair and the skin of the hide. And it'll puff that up and make it easier to scrape that off as well, as well as make it easier just to see where it's at. Because it'll be kind of hard to discern between hide and dermis sometimes. So yeah, I'm going to take these hides, I'm going to soak them in here, and we'll leave them till at least tomorrow afternoon. It's a pretty strong solution, so hopefully it won't take um, too long. Oftentimes people do that take several days for this portion. So I'm kind of rushing things, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. There we go. Just going to let that sit and uh, see how it looks tomorrow. Okay, so it's been 24 hours since I put the hides in the lye solution roughly. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the hides, see how they're coming along, and maybe even get going on slipping the hair. So before you check out your hides, I do recommend putting on gloves and an apron. The lye solution can physically burn you. Um, so having protection is good so it doesn't screw up your clothing and doesn't burn your skin. Well, let's go ahead and see how these are coming along. While they were in here, I did come, come around every so often and poke them with a stick and kind of just mix them around in there so they got all exposed to the lye. But you see how that hair just slips off very easily. It just wants to come out now. Um, that's, that's really good. And it looks like the, looks like the dermis is getting pretty puffed up. So, I, I'm going to call these good and I'm going to go ahead and start de-hairing these. Okay, so I got both the hides completely de-haired, got the membrane off both of them. I went around after I got all the hair and most of the membrane off with the initial scraping. I went back once it was completely clean and just gave it another good scra scraping just to make sure I got all the little bits and pieces of membrane that might have still been on there. But now I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step and that's just simply taking the hides putting them in the creek right over here and just having them soak overnight. What that's going to do is it's going to bring the lot, well it's going to get the lye out of the hide and it's going to bring the hide to a normal pH and so the swelling of the hide will go back down and then that will allow me to tan it tomorrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and get them in the creek.
Okay, so I got both my hides out of the creek this morning and I've just been letting them dry. I've actually run this out a couple times just to kind of get most of the excess moisture out of it. Just so when I put it into my tanning solution, it will absorb a bunch of it. And I'll actually show you how I, um, how you wring out the hide here in a minute when I start wringing out the tanning solution. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about my tanning solution and then get my hide in there and get going. Okay, so here's my tanning solution. I'm doing egg tanning, so I ended up putting about 15 eggs in there, and I hopefully this will be enough to do both hides. If not, I have more eggs. But I put about 15 eggs in there, probably about a quarter cup of olive oil, and then just the smallest little drip of soap. And then mixed it all together really well and added a few cups of war warm water to it. And um, that's it. And so I'm gonna put my hide in there and have it absorb all of that good fat and uh, then I'll wring it out a couple times just to get that oil to penetrate it completely and then I'll start actually uh, softening the hide so we'll go ahead and get the hide in there All right, so I just pulled the hide out of the tanning solution. I just worked it in there with my hands for a couple minutes just to get it really good and saturated. And now I'm actually going to try to get as much of that tanning solution out as possible. So I'm actually going to wring out the hide really good. And the way I'm gonna do that is I throw the hide over this pole here. Come down here to the bottom. Bring it up over the top and then just kind of start rolling up each side. Just kind of like you're rolling up the sleeve of like a t-shirt or something. Just kind of creating like a little donut. And you just want both sides to meet in the middle. You want to take a good steady pull, good strong pull rather. Feed it through the bottom of that donut. And then I take my bucket of tanning solution and I put it underneath where I'm wringing so I can catch that solution. And you just start kind of twisting on it. All right, so I ran my hide through the tanning solution multiple times, wrung it out a bunch of times, and I feel like it's really nice and saturated now with all the oils and fats and stuff from the solution. And now I'm actually gonna move on to the softening stage. And so what I'm gonna use to soften it is just something I just, a little makeshift thing. It's uh, just a pole, and then I split it with my machete, and then I just wedge this little bracket hinge thing into it so it's just a little thin piece of metal and uh, 
I think that works really well because it like helps to like break up the fibers um, really good and just helps make the softening process go quicker. Um, but you don't have to use a piece of metal and I've seen a lot of people just use just to cut a tree off and then kind of bring it up to a flathead point and use that. But I'm going to go ahead and go with this and all I'm going to be doing is put my hide over it and I'm just simply working it bit by bit just breaking up those fibers and keeping that hide moving and this is the stage where it will really start to transform into what looks like fabric so this is a pretty fun stage requires some patience but we'll get there and you're going to want to do this until the hide is completely bone dry. If you stop early before it's completely dry, then the hide will stiffen up and harden and then it won't be really soft. So you got to go com you have to work it until it's completely dry in order for it to be as soft as possible. Alright, so I've been working it for about 45 minutes now and you can see how it's turning white and it's kind of starting to look more like buckskin and that's just the fibers as they break up the hide kind of turns more and more white so it's a good sign and I'm just going to keep going this is a really thick hide from a big buck and so this is going to take a while I mean typically if there if it's a, a really small deer and it's got a thin hide you can do them really quick in a couple hours but this this is going to take a while just because it's so thick all right so it's been a couple hours since i started um, working this hide and softening it and it's definitely uh, making some progress but it's a really thick hide so it's just taking a lot of time but I'm going to keep working on it. I'll probably end up having to go into the dark a little bit and uh, yeah we'll just keep going. Oh a couple tips though when you're um, tanning a hide or, or softening a hide like this uh, oftentimes it's the edges and the corners that start to dry first so it's really important to continuously work the edges probably more than anything else especially initially and until those completely dry and then the middle can be worked more you want to work the, all of it all the time but you can put a greater influence on the edges for the first little while until they start to dry and then work your, work your way into the middle So I think I finally finished my first hide, and it's a super thick hide. It's probably the thickest hide I've ever worked before, and I was working this thing for probably six hours all, all together. I worked on it late into the night last night, and then this morning extensively. And it's still not as soft as I like it to get, and I think that's primarily just because it's super thick, but it's still a really good fabric. Or good like durable leather material and so I could use this for a lot of stuff like nice sheets stuff that you want to be more durable I mean maybe big pouches things like that backpack um, but for clothing I don't think I'd use it for that that being said it's it's a nice piece of leather and I'm glad I'm finally done working it it took many times longer than it typically does just because this this hide is so thick and uh, it was from a, a male, a larger male, so it makes sense that it was a thick hide, but it was a lot of work. But I'm glad I have it, I'm glad I got it done, and pretty happy with how it came out. 
I could tan it, soften it a little bit more, but I'm just going to leave it at as, as is. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get going on my second hide. And I'm starting to suspect with my first hide, the reason it came out crunchy was I think I didn't get all of the dermis off of the uh, hair side. I think there's still a thin layer of that membrane, that little skin layer in between the hair and the skin that I didn't get off. And uh, that's why it came out crunchy. Because I gave this second hide an extra fleshing and I noticed I was breaking up extra dermis that was on there and uh, seeing it in places that I didn't notice it was there and breaking it up. And so I think that's why the other one really didn't come out super soft. I'm suspecting this one will and I'm actually going to go back and probably potentially redo the other one and uh, just to get it really nice. But rookie mistake, I uh, really am not that experienced with doing this kind of thing. I've only done a couple hides before so I'm still figuring it out. I don't have like a good eye for stuff. But I'm suspecting this is going to come out way way nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it out and start tanning it, start softening it. All right, so I'm going to start working the hide now. Alright, so I think I finally got this hide to a point where I think I'm done tanning it. It feels completely dry. I don't feel any damp spots anywhere on it. So all I have to do now is smoke this hide and it'll be fully preserved. So if I was to take this hide right now and get it wet again, whether it rained on it or put it in a creek or whatever, as it dried it would become completely hard and it would become rawhide. And so in order to prevent that from happening, if I'm actually wearing it as clothing, I don't want it to harden up on me, so you actually smoke the hide. And so I'm going to redo the original hide that I did that came out a lot more stiff, and because I'm pretty sure I left a lot of the dermis on. In fact, I know I did. So I'm going to go back and redo that hide, and I'll show you what I do to correct my dermis mistake get that one really soft and then I'm going to smoke these hides as the final step and get them fully preserved. Okay, so I have my first hide soaking in the egg solution again and I'm actually going to go through the process of removing the dermis and I'm going to re-tan the hide. So, unfortunate that I made that mistake, but I learned a valuable lesson. So now I'm going to take you through the process of how I'm actually going to attempt to remove the 
remaining dermis that I accidentally left on there. So I have it soaking in an egg solution here and I'm actually going to put it on the pole here and wring it out really good and then take it to the fleshing beam and try to work off the dermis then. Okay, so I wrung the hide out best I could, and now I'm going to start breaking up and scraping off the remaining dermis. And so the dermis is kind of this, see this kind of just like membrane almost, it's like this darker color. All of that will like harden together because it's uh, just like a thin layer of skin. And so I'm going to come around with my flushing, uh, my flushing tool here and just work it like this. slowly start breaking up that dermis the best I can. So I finally got all the dermis off the hide and I put it back in the egg tanning solution and I stretched it out and I kind of wrung it out with my hands and now I'm about to wring it up on the pole again. Alright, I wrung it out and now I'm just working it just like just like before. So I worked on my hide pretty late into the night, a couple hours into the night last night, and I put it in a non-porous plastic bag and um, left it overnight. It was still slightly damp, and so you can put it in a bag or something so that it doesn't lose that moisture and come back to it a little bit later. I wouldn't wait too long though. And so I got up this morning and now I'm working it again and I'm getting relatively close. So I'm just going to keep on going until I don't feel any moisture, but it's coming out really nice. It's really soft compared to how it was. It's still a thick hide, but I'm pretty happy with how it's coming. Okay, so I actually have my hides currently smoking. And the way I set it up is I just took both my hides and I 
placed them on top of each other and I glued around the edges with like some Elmer's glue and that just created a bag basically and I'm hanging this from a branch above it and I just kind of clipped off all the holes to kind of make it a little bit more airtight have it attached to this blue jeans that I kind of glued into it when I glued the hides together and then that attaches to the top of this number 10 can that I rigged into like a little billy stove so I just made a fire in that and I let it go down to embers and then I put it on top of this attached the pant leg to it sealed it off with the clothes pins and started putting the punk wood in there and then I'm just blowing on it getting that punk wood smoldering to create a lot of smoke to fill up my bag and get these hides really well uh, smoked so that when they get wet they won't get stiff again they'll stay pliable and flexible so here's the punk wood that I'm using you can see how if I put pressure on it it just cracks and breaks easily that's the kind of punk wood you're looking for you don't want this stuff that's really broken down and kind of spongy um, that's no good you want this stuff because it's gonna not burn but it's gonna smolder better than the other stuff and it's still gonna produce a lot of good smoke so this is what I typically go for Alright, so I had it smoking for probably about two hours, and now I'm just going to turn it inside out and start getting the other side. I took a peek through one of the holes, and you know, I noticed it was getting a really good color on the inside, so I went ahead and called it. Now, a tricky thing with this, these, this hide setup that I got here is one hide is a lot thinner than the other hide so this hide over here is going to get really well smoked and this one will be a little subpar but they should both be good enough for what I need them for so it's pretty dark out obviously but I got the hides turned back in inside out and everything set up and I got it smoking again and so I'm just gonna probably keep this going for another two hours or so, or so and then I'll be done and I will uh, at that point just take the hides and pull them apart trim off the edges where the glue was and I'll be done at that point I'll have two completed hides so yeah been a really fun project Appreciate you joining me for this, and I can't wait to uh, show you the finished product. All right, so all my hard work has finally paid off, and I have two, two beautiful completed buckskin hides, fully smoked and preserved and ready to go, ready to be sewn into clothing, uh, pouches, backpacks, knife sheaths, all kinds of goodies. So, yeah, I, I smoked them about an hour into the night last night and then I went ahead and called it quits and I pulled them apart and I trimmed off the edges where the glue was and this is what I'm left with. The thinner one obviously got a, a nicer darker color and the thicker one is a lot lighter yellow but I think they're both pretty good, they're pro both pretty well preserved. I, I think if this gets wet it's still going to be uh, flexible and it's going to stay pliable like I want it to. Um, but I do like the nice dark rich color over here, but that's just kind of uh, something you struggle with when you're working with two different thicknesses. But all in all, super fun, and uh, appreciate you all watching Coyote Bushcraft, and uh, look forward to seeing you all next time.